TCI is brought to you by Eskenderea, the most dominant three-year-old this decade. Seeing is believing at eskionthego.com. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. Joel, we had the Risen Star and the Fountain Youth over the weekend. Obviously, the headliner is Union Rags. The question mark was, would he remain the Derby favorite? The answer to that is yes, and deservingly so. The horse did what he needed to do in the Fountain of Youth. My question to you is, after Algorithm scratched, what really was his competition in this race? Well, you bring up a great point. I mean, he was the headliner this weekend. We wanted to see his three-year-old debut because he was the clear Derby favorite to this point, John, particularly with Hanson disappointing. But... Again, what did we really learn when Algorithm scratched? I mean, there was the horse that I really thought was going to be his chief competition. That was the showdown of the weekend right. I wanted to see, and that's what made the Fountain of Youth stake so great, in my opinion. Once Discreet Dancer showed he was clearly a sprinter miler, didn't handle that second turn, and readily stopped, it really became a very easy race for Union Rags. But you know what? It was the perfect race for him. It wasn't the best race, but it was the perfect race. We know he has class, and I do like the fact that he now gets this race under his belt, you know, a race to where he showed some speed, got along with his rider, in the stretch he ran straight, ran for about a sixteenth of a mile, geared down to save something for later, right. and galloped out well. So it was a very useful prep for him, but you're right. He didn't beat anybody, so I'm not going to say it was the most impressive thing I ever saw, but it was very useful. It was a perfect prep. All right, well, let's talk about the horse that ran second. He's coming out of Allowance Company, News Pending. Joel, this horse really did improve in this race. Where could we see him next, possibly? Yeah, News Pending really did show improvement, John. You know, he ran his lifetime best, best race, going a mile and eighth on the, on the turf last time out. Comes back in 21 days. He ran behind a pretty good horse that day. Comes back in 21 days, and he got that trip that I thought Algorithms was going to get which is why I really want to see the, him in the race right. because I thought he'd get first run on a stable mate, be hard to reel in uh, and really give Union Rags a test. News pending made a, a very crafty middle move when they realized the pace was slow. Very heads up riding job by Kent DeSormo there. And he kicked on. He kept on going, John. I mean, here's an improving colt. He ran another top figure. And what's interesting is he likes turf. He likes the mile and eighth. He likes the dirt. They could dodge Union Rags now. They could come back in the Florida Derby. I don't know how he's going to make up those four or five lengths he got beat by, but I could see this horse maybe running the Bluegrass Stakes. He's a son of Harlan's Holiday, out of a Lear fan mare. You know, there's some, uh, you know, a lot of sons of Harlan Holiday really like the synthetic. I could see this horse being a contender in the Bluegrass. If he gets great in earnings there, then all of a sudden, boom, he's now a mid-level type contender in the Kentucky Derby. So he's on the improve, and we know what Romans did last year with Shackleford. Right. Now, you mentioned algorithms. Obviously, he popped a splint. Joel, he's going to miss some time. You had him in your top five. Does he yeah. stay there? I'm going to leave him in the top five for now, John, because, again, it's wide open behind Union Rags. I mean, you have some horses like Out of Bounds who skipped a prep and is pointing for a final prep race at this point. I mean, you have horses like El Padrino. We'll talk about him a little bit. But, honestly, behind Union Rags, I think it's wide open right now. So a horse that has shown the ability that Algorithms has, just because he had a minor setback, if it continues to be minor, I'm going to keep him on the top five for now, but I'm going to monitor him. I want to see him, obviously, get back on the work tab soon and work up towards the Florida Derby. If he's not going to make a start here in the next three or four or five weeks, certainly that's going to be problematic for him being in the Derby picture at all. But right. for right now, if it's just a week setback, I think you got to leave him in the top five based on what he's shown this year. All right, you mentioned El Petrino. we got to talk about him in the Risen Star. He ships in. Joe, we said there was two questions about this race. How was the LeCompte farm, and would El Petrino be able to get it done against graded stakes competition? Right. Joel, both of those questions were answered over the weekend. Yeah, and the best local form wound up being allowance horse, Mark Valeski, John. We learned that that LeCompte was a little soft. You know, it was, we thought it was a little suspect when we watched it. There's a lot of horses close at the finish in the LeCompte Stakes. And I think a lot of horses that were maybe more 7 8 or miler type horses, like Shared Property, for example. You know, you saw Z Dagger come back in here, run a pretty good race. He ran the best race of any of the LeCompte finishers, but he was right. a distant third. So I think Mark Valeski really stepped up. He's a big son of Proud Citizen. First time stretching out. I thought he had a great trip. You know, here's a colt that just kept on going in the stretch, and he gave El Padrino a little bit of a tussle. So right. Mark Valeski becomes a little interesting because he, he bodes those nice connections with Larry Jones, who very capable of bringing a horse along on the derby trail. Well, the question for me is, you know, with, with the race being that close, 
Does it, does it say how good Mark Valeski is, or is El Petrino maybe not the horse we thought he was? You know, I don't think that was El Petrino's kind of race. I give him a lot of credit for running down that horse. Now, obviously, his seasonal advantage over him, even though he's only run once this year, he has some two-year-old foundation. Mark Valeski, though, was the home track horse. You know, certainly stretching out with that pedigree and the trip he got, the stock, a very slow pace. I thought Mark Valeski had a lot easier trip than El Padrino. And Fairgrounds was playing towards speed this weekend. So, you know, for El Padrino to lay a little closer and he wanted to and to run that horse down the stretch. Now, there was a claim of foul. It looked like he might have gone into him, but obviously that nothing came of that. Right. I was impressed with El Padrino's performance. The question for him is, you know, he's got that Giants Causeway in the bottom side. We know he likes two turns. How far is he going to go? He's got a very efficient stride. We know he's a top quality colt. How far is he going to go? Because that pulpit top side, there's not a lot of pulpits that are classic, real classic horses. That becomes an interesting question beyond a mile and eighth. What also becomes interesting is what are they going to do with this horse right, now? Exactly. I mean, now we have, he won the Louisiana Derby prep, but now Algorithms is out. Discreet Dancer doesn't want the distance. What does Todd do with El Petrino? Yeah, it's a very, very great question. I mean, when you're talking about Discreet Dancer, he's, you would have to believe he's probably off the Derby trail at this point. They're going to focus him uh, uh, to a sprinting miler type career like a sire Discreet Cat where he probably belongs. But what are they going to do with Algorithms? Is he going to come back and get in that floor? Florida Derby picture. If not, you have two million dollar races, the Louisiana Derby and the Florida Derby, a day apart. Right. But you don't have to ship to New Orleans again with El Padrino. You know he likes Gulfstream and it's a grade one. But do you want to tackle Union Rag? So a lot of lot to consider there, but it's an interesting factor because you would think El Padrino is going back to New Orleans for the uh, Louisiana Derby, but I'm not so sure anymore. Right. Todd's options are definitely open. Joel, we have talked a lot about maiden madness. Tell me, were there any maidens over the weekend that impressed you that you think could get on the Triple Crown Trail? Yeah, I mean, it's almost March now. I don't think a maiden at this point, you know, if, if you're just now breaking your maiden or you're only a maiden and you really haven't stepped up uh, and, and won an allowance race or been a force in a great stake at this point, you're probably not going to have success in the Derby on May 5th. But Arm Force really caught my eye on the Gulfstream undercard uh, this past weekend, John. I was very impressed with his size and the fact that he was so precocious in his st second start to run down spin out. However, the, you know the horse is going to really be a true classic type horse. I mean, look at his physique and his pedigree. He's a full to well arm. So big future for him. Not going to make the Derby. It's just it's too close, I think, at this point. But I could see him as maybe a Belmont contender if they take the Peter Pan route. All right. Thank you, Joel. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back on Thursday. We are going to preview the Gotham Stakes.